Alright guys, today I'm just going to be doing a quick video that is kind of going to go along with the other video I just did of testing three different CD players of, uh, you know, different costs, $50, $250, and what was it, $1,300. Now, uh, the next little experiment I'm going to be doing here is taking my uh, cheapest, worst CD player I have, um, like I said, I think brand new this Magnavox, I don't know, back in probably in the early two, 2000s, was probably maybe 50 bucks. Um, just a cheap old Walmart DVD CD player. Um, it's virtually worthless now. You could probably get it for nothing or five bucks now, but it plays CDs. I'm going to see if, uh, as you can see on the top there, there's an SMSL uh, M100 DAC. Um, I don't know, they run 50, 60 bucks. Um, I'm going to play music directly on the CD player, and then I'm going to route uh, coax into the SMSL 100, and then into the Marantz. Um, just to show, let the, you know, the DAC in this has to be pretty cheap garbage. And then if we use the coax, um, we can bypass the DAC in the uh, CD DVD player and send the digital signal to the SMSL 100. Uh, which has a guarantee you has a much better DAC um, and see if it makes any improvement or not. So basically, can you uh, make a cheap CD player sound much better by adding a modern DAC to it or not? So for the beginning of this, I got the cheap CD DVD player hooked directly to the Marantz SR4021. We'll do a couple songs and then we'll switch it over and do a couple more songs and see if there's really any improvement. Uh, and I'm going to be using Junk Poet again because even though it is copyrighted, I know the person that holds the rights to it and I have permission to use it and I'm extremely familiar with their music. So here we go. Switch over to the SMSL 100, play a couple more, and then we'll uh, have a little chat. Okay, we're switched over. 
Now I'm using the coaxial out on the CD player, uh, sending the just the raw digital ones and zeros to the uh, DAC, and we're going to let the DAC and the SMSL M100 do the digital to analog conversion instead of the probably super cheap DAC in that, and we're going to see how much of a difference, if I can uh, hear much of a difference, we'll see. All right. Whoops. Let's start here. down so you can hear me um before i'm doing what i did now i was obviously listening to other stuff that's copyrighted that i can't do on youtube because they flag it so fast now um i have a bunch of these chesky cds uh chesky records is um, simply put they make a lot of high-end recordings um they do a lot of 24-bit and other stuff now these cds are back from the 90s when uh, they were doing a lot more of the just the typical cd 1644-1, but unlike a lot of mainstream music recordings that aren't necessarily recorded around sound quality, um, it, uh, a lot of other ideas go into uh, recordings with a lot of mainstream music. It's They're very rarely uh, based around utmost sound quality, but Chesky, on the other hand, is. The, a lot of their recordings, uh, they are based on, you know, audiophile high-end uh, recordings, and a lot of these older Chesky CDs can easily be found uh, on eBay and other thrifty online sites for, I think I paid three or four bucks a piece for each of these. They're not mainstream music, of course. They're, uh, I guess you'd call it more of, I don't know, I'd almost call it like elevator music. Um, but it's, if you really want to sit down and um, have a, you know, a recording, a CD recording that you know was done with sound quality in mind, and there goes my furnace. Um, look for these Chesky CDs; uh, they're they're around, um, and uh, yeah, they're nice to have around. Uh, kind of have a uh, like a I don't know something you always go back to to test your different speakers and stuff on. Now. I've just been going through this with Junk Poet on here because, like I said, it's I have permission to use it. Now, comparing the difference is what you're all here for, I'm assuming. 
once I routed the digital signal through the uh, M100 DAC, um, I can't say the difference is huge, but it is noticeable. And I am, I don't know if I'd really consider myself an audiophile. I, I guess that's such a loose term now. Um, I try to be realistic about it. The differences are definitely there, but they're not mind-blowing. They're pretty uh, pretty minimal, but they're definitely there. Um, you wouldn't have to listen too hard to notice it. Um, if you're actually sitting down to listen to music, you're going to notice it. Um, if it's just going to be like background noise, you probably wouldn't really notice. But any, anyway, once I got the got it going through the M100, um, the probably the first thing I noticed was the instrument separation was a little better. Um, a couple of songs I did there, there were some crashing cymbals or whatever. The decay, I think that's what it would be. The decay on the cymbals seemed a lot more realistic. Um, don't know why. I wasn't even looking for it, but it was apparent enough that it caught my ear. Uh, the you know, I didn't even notice it with the other CD player and, or with the, you know, not going through the SMSL. And then just the, the transients of the bass seemed a little tighter, a little more realistic, a little more natural. Um, yeah, I could guess I could say as a whole, uh, the musicality or whatever of it, it just became more natural and realistic sounding because of the separation, the decay, um, it even seemed like it became a little bit warmer, which is possible. Different DACs have different uh, different DACs, analog output stages, what yada yada, have different sound signatures. And I can only imagine the one in this has got to be just the most cheapest crap. Um, doesn't mean a CD won't sound okay on it. For most people, probably 99% of people, CD's gonna, CD is going to sound just fine in this cheap CD player. And you know, if you have a CD player that you like and you you know, or like a tuner disc changer or something that's got all your CDs in it and they're all organized and you got tons of hours in it and you want to keep it, but you want to make it sound better. Boom. Um, and then, I mean, SMSL M100 is, like I said, I think you can usually find around 60 bucks. And on, was it, Audio Science Review, it tested really good for its price. I mean, its DAC and analog output stager is more than capable to, I think, fully reproduce 16-bit or CD. Uh, like most acts, it starts to fall short once you get into 24-bit, but that's not what we're talking about here. This is, as far as CD, that thing has more than enough oh, Synad, I believe, to fully reproduce 1644-1. Uh, so... Like I said, if you got a CD player or you don't want to spend a lot of money on a CD player, you just want something, you know, basically it's just need something to act as a CD transport. Um, boom, this would be a good way to go. Um, unless you're, you know, you're looking for something that looks fancy or whatever. But like I said, I'm getting off track again. This is more for the people that already have a system set up. They, they, don't really want to change it. They like the CD player or DVD player they have, or they have like a two or three hundred disc changer or something. They have tons of hours in, have all their music in, and they just want to improve the sound of an existing player. Get something like the SMSL M100 DAC. Um, I will list a handful of other affordable uh, DACs in the description that you can use just as the external DAC outside of your CD player. And it, it, it's People kind of do the same thing with uh, turntables. Um, a lot of turntables don't have a phono stage built in, or their amplifier has a phono stage built in, but um, they don't like the phono stage that's in their amplifier or in their turntable. You can buy an external phono stage uh, to improve potentially the sound of your records. With CD players, one of the best, easiest ways to do that without opening up your CD player and messing with anything is just get it a better DAC. Now your CD player, or DVD player, or whatever you're using is going to have to have a digital output, which almost all of them do. Even this piece of crap has a coax output. Um, 
I can't say there's really any benefit to using coax over optical, um, whatever. Um, since it's a digital signal, it doesn't really matter if the cable's shielded or not. It's just transferring ones and zeros. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, put them down below. Uh, like I said, it. I will. I'm not going to say it was a mind blowing difference, but I will. I will say. For me to recommend it, I'd have to pretty much be able to detect it in a blind test. And just in this short little uh, experience here that I've created, I'm 99% sure I could I could uh, notice the difference even in a blind test. Not Maybe not a huge difference, but i could pretty certain I could tell the difference. And for me, that's enough to recommend it to you. Now, how much you want to spend on an external DAC for your CD player, I don't know how much that will affect sound. Because um, like I said, this SMSL M100 uh, is probably one of the best DACs out there for the money. So, And it's small. It's easy to tuck away you know, next to something. And it, it's, you know, go watch my SMSL M100 video. Anyway, I don't want this video to get too long. I'd say this experiment was successful. You can definitely improve a crappy CD player sound by giving an external deck. So, all right. Good night, guys.